Hey everyone, my name's Riley. Hi Riley. And today I want to talk to you all about trans people and body positivity. That's an odd combination, but okay. Because for one, a lot of trans folks struggle with body positivity and I want to help you feel better in your own skin. Ah, so cool. You're going to bring us some hard-won experience from your practice as... Oh. Oh, okay. Um... Never mind. And also, I want to talk about how the mainstream body positive movement generally tends to leave out trans people and what we can do to fix that. So regardless of whether you're cis or trans, hopefully this video will go over something that can be helpful for you. Oh no, I sense a train wreck incoming. Either in regards to accepting yourself or in making space in your body positive movement for people who are different from you. But before we get into all of that, I want to tell you about this video. Anyway, back to the video. So the first part of this I want to talk about is the kind of paradox that trans people get pulled into when it comes to body positivity. Because the kind of mainstream narrative that most people recognize for trans people is the thing where a trans person just like hates their body so much that they need to have multiple surgeries and get hormones to change their body as much as possible. Okay, what you're dismissing as a stereotype is actually a definitional item. Transsexual individuals are individuals who are suffering from gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is the deeply held belief that you are in the wrong body. That you have a female brain and a male body, or a male brain and a female body. As far as we know, there are two major causes of this. One is biological, one is psychological. How you treat the dysphoria hinges on making the determination of what the root cause is. So it's not a stereotype. It's actually a definition. And so because of that, there are plenty of folks who think body positivity is completely incompatible with being trans. It's not that body positivity is incompatible with being transsexual. It's that it's irrelevant. If you're confused by that, go back and listen to the definition from a few seconds ago. Now, body positivity on its own actually started off as, I think, a very positive movement. It was the statement that you don't have to fit stamp X to be beautiful. Unfortunately, it was co-opted by the fat acceptance movement, which has been floundering around since the 1960s, and it's been turned into this. Morbidly obese people trying to convince the world that they're healthy, beautiful, and that it is a healthy lifestyle to be morbidly obese. And it's no longer positive movement. I mean, if your idea of transness is hating your body and your idea of body positivity is loving your body, then it's easy to see how those folks don't think trans people can be body positive. I mean, there's been times on the internet where I said I don't completely hate every aspect of my body or I like this one part of my body or whatever. And Okay, the question is, why would you do that? Immediately, tons of people were yelling about how that meant I couldn't really be trans. Because obviously, a trans person can never love or even like anything about their body. And I know so many other trans people who've experienced this too, that if we try to dip our toes into the body positive pool, even just a little bit, the very legitimacy of our gender is called into question. By who and why do you care? So there's one thing I want to clear up for anyone who might think that being trans automatically means hating your body. Being trans often means having parts of your body that you aren't super comfortable with, but it doesn't automatically mean hating your body. Our bodies do a lot for us. They help us get around and eat food and breathe and think and communicate and do all kinds of things. We can appreciate those aspects of our body while still being uncomfortable with other parts of it. Tr well, thank you, Captain Obvious. Trans people aren't trans because they hate their bodies. They're trans because they identify as a gender that is different than the one they were assigned at birth. I think you mean observed at birth. Remember that definition of transgender and you're good to go. There's no self-hate level that you have to reach to be trans, and I think that would be an awful way to police our community. So at this point, you might be thinking, well, if trans people can embrace body positivity, then why would they still want to have surgery or go on hormones? And the answer is that gender dysphoria, and specifically body dysphoria, isn't... And here's the train wreck. Conflating gender dysphoria with body dysphoria is roughly the same as conflating the common flu with Ebola. Yeah, they share some superficial symptoms, but they aren't the same thing at all. Something you can think your way out of. Dysphoria is something that sticks with you. People have tried thinking their way out of it, but those- Holy crap! Something I actually agree with. You can't talk your way out of either gender dysphoria or body dysphoria. Those folks often end up coming out much later in life when they realize that they couldn't think their way out of it. I've seen and heard so many stories from older trans folks who knew from such a young age that they were trans, but they thought if they repressed it and ignored it, then it would go away, and it didn't. Other people have tried forcing trans people to think their way out of dysphoria, and that's usually classified as conversion therapy. Okay, two things really quick. You're now conflating three separate conditions. Dysphoria, gender dysphoria, and body dysphoria. Just because they have a word in common does not mean they're the same thing. Secondly, I have to take back that agreement. 
What I was agreeing to was the fact that simply thinking your way through it won't help you resolve the condition. What you're talking about is conversion therapy, which is an entirely different thing. And yes, I agree, conversion therapy is stupid, it doesn't work, and it's nonsensical. On that note, you might want to consider the fact that both of us agree that conversion therapy doesn't work means we also both agree that gender and gender expression is biologically based. Therapy, trying to convert them to being cis. And it's hugely inhumane, ineffective, and harmful to the people who've experienced it. So no, you can't think your way out of dysphoria. And that's why surgery and hormones are often so important to trans people and why we fight for those things to be recognized as a medical necessity. You need to make up your mind. Is it a common stereotype? Because the kind of mainstream narrative that most people recognize for trans people is the thing where a trans person just like hates their body so much that they need to have multiple surgeries and get hormones to change their body as much as possible. Or is it a medical necessity? Dysphoria. And that's why surgery and hormones are often so important to trans people and why we fight for those things to be recognized as a medical necessity because they're often the only way to effectively treat dysphoria. Trans people who get access to hormones and surgery tend to see huge reductions in the amount of dysphoria that they experience. But there's a large portion of the trans community that can't access those surgeries or can't get on hormones. And so what are they supposed to do? Just hate themselves for their whole lives? I mean, I really- well, I could continue this, but really there's no sense. Riley continues on in the exact same vein self-contradictory circular arguments and the only thing that's really demonstrated is that Riley has no clue. I happen to believe that dysphoria, body dysphoria, gender dysphoria, these are all serious topics that deserve serious fact and evidence-based discussions and Riley simply doesn't provide that. This is nothing more than a stream of consciousness from somebody whose knowledge doesn't rise above the bubblegum pop psychology level. Anyways, Thanks everyone for staying with me till the end, and shameless self-promotion incoming in 3, 2, 1. As always everyone, if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and share it around. If you didn't like the video, subscribe anyways. You might like the next one, but definitely leave a comment. Have a great day everyone.